Hello everybody and welcome to a new tutorial. In this tutorial I'll be covering how to change what happens when you click an object or what happens when you click the second option of an object um, and I'm also going to be quickly covering how to make a custom portal which only donators can use because someone asked how to do that. Um, it's pretty simple you're just going to I'm going to be pretty much showing you with that how to um, edit the first click of an object and add a custom portal as an object and then just implementing the whole cannot ban the uh, cannot ban the owners video um, if statement inside that which checks rights but anyway okay so first off you need to go source com rs and then click net and then go into decoders handlers and then open up object handler.java so when you have opened that there's a few things you need to know um, each option uh, each object sorry I keep getting that mixed up each object has different options and you'll see them down here as handle option one. What handle option one pretty much means is the first option on that object, which is normally the option that you get if you left click it, um, is what it will do. And if you search for handle option, you find handle option two, which is just like when you right click it and choose the second option down. Um, so that's what handle option two is. Handle option three, I'm not 100% sure on what this is, as I've never actually used it, but um, I'm assuming it's just the third one down below the second one. So handle option one is like left click, handle option two is when you right click it and select the um, second option, and then handle option three is the same thing, you just right click it and then choose the bottom one. So today what I'm going to be showing you how to do is edit option one, this works the same for option two, but it will just be way faster if I just show you how to edit option one. So, first of all, you do not really need to know all the stuff. If you want to read through it, then you can. But the best way to start, or best place to start, is right about here. But I would start just around here, after the whole QBD thing, where it does that massive thing. So down here. We're going to start down here. So, if we look at an already made one, which we're going to use this one, for example, which is a stall, um, it pretty much says, else if... So pretty much if the object's ID is equal equal, which means is the same as whatever that ID is, then it will do whatever is in between the brackets. If you watched um, some of my other videos, you'll notice that the format for all this stuff, all this stuff is pretty much the same, if statement, then it checks something, and then it does something. So that's pretty much how you do it. That's why I'm saying the syntax is so important, because once you know the syntax, you can pretty much read through the files, and sort of get get a grip on how Java works. Um, well, to an extent, how RuneScape private servers work. Um, but, okay, so, pretty much what it says is if the object's ID is the same as that, then it will do whatever's in the brackets. So, for example, we're going to use an object. Well, we're actually going to find our own object. So what you pretty much have to do is just go onto the internet if you want to find the object IDs, and then go to some form of object um, ID list, which I use rune locus one. So if you go to rune locus, then go tools, ID lists, then click object ID list, that should come up with this. And for example, we're gonna use portal. Now, the best way to check if it's not been made is grab an ID, so 2466, and then go in game, and then type dot dot object, and then space, and then the ID. So what ID were we using? 2466, so 2466. And then it will spawn the object, and then pretty much walk off it, click it, and if nothing happens, then it means it's free. Your source may not have dot dot object. If it doesn't, just read through your commands dot Java until you find what thing spawns the object. So once you know that it isn't used, grab the ID, and then chuck it into your object handler. So just put it there for now. But pretty much what we're going to do is we're going to copy this whole format. So we're going to put in an else if statement. We're using else if because I'm assuming that um, the, uh, the if the first thing that it was checking has already been done, and everything else above it is else if. So you just keep using else if, uh, if that makes sense. So what you do is you do the statement, and then the two curly brackets or the two straight brackets. I mean, which is the variable or what it's checking, and then the code bra brackets. So inside the two curly brackets add an id equals equals and then do 2466 or whatever other portal number that you want to do is 
Okay, so after that it does, we've pretty much made a semi-basic code where it says if the object ID is 2466, then it will do absolutely nothing. So, to make a portal, what you have to do is you have to add some form of line, like some line like this, which pretty much initiates a teleport or a movement. Um, I've already pre-got the three teleports that I know of. One is player.usestairs, the next is player set next world title, and the last one is player sex, uh, player set next force movement. So, what this one pretty much does is it's the main one that's used for teleportation with objects. Um, what it does is it pretty much, um, when you click on an object, it will make you do whatever emote ID is there, and then send you to this world tile. Uh, I'm not too sure what these are, these could be the direction that you end up in, but I'm not too sure about that. But um, that one's the best one to use, so if you want you can pause the video and copy that in. Um, the second one is player set next world tile. Um, I, th I haven't actually used this one to be honest, I just found it randomly when I was about to start this video. What I assume it does is pretty much the same as this, just without the emote, and it instantly teleports you to this one. Okay, so the last one that I know of is player set next force movement. So what that pretty much does, is, or what I think it does, is it's used for agility or custom agility things. And so if you click on something, then it will send you to uh, this world tile. Well, actually, I've ignored that one. Don't use that one because I'm missing half of it. So only use these two. Ignore the other one. Sorry about that. What was our time? Okay. Okay getting a bit long but anyway only use these ones for t for now we're going to use this one so we're just going to copy it and then paste it in there and then for a basic emote we can just do let's try minus one so there's no emote but you can choose whatever you want and then for a world tile we'll go into our game and then make it make it just like a teleport to the bank so we go to the spot we want and then type dot dot chords and it gives us the chords, which we can then paste in here. So 3094, and then the second one is 3491, and then 0. Not too sure, remember I'm not too sure what that does, so I assume it's the direction. So we're just going to leave it like that for now. Um, and there you have it. That's how you edit or create a new object click thing. So, what you can also add in, you can add in whatever you want. You can make it a player, um, I always forget the actual syntax of this, I think it's get packets, something like that, um, and then send game message, or something like this, I'm not sure if I'm doing it right, and then you can just be like, yo, you click the teleport, and then stuff like that, and make sure you always close it, or you can put in whatever you want really, you could make it, say if you wanted to add XP, uh, add XP, you would go player, uh, so if you were to add in an XP thing, you'd go player, dot get skills with those two brackets dot add xp skills dot whatever skill you want in capitals so if we wanted defense we would type in defense if we wanted um i don't know cooking you'd type in cooking and then how much xp you want to gain i'm not too sure if there's a multiplier on this i'm pretty sure there isn't but there could be um i can't actually remember to be honest but you can just figure that out normally it's times four times five something like that if there is one but that is pretty much how you edit an object's um, option. So now to make it donator. To do this, some things people need to learn. There, if you use my source, which um, a few people have, there is a rank called donator. So if I set rights one to me, I am now donator. If I perm donator me, I get perm. I get donator status. Donator status and donator right is completely different. The status allows me to go to um, places that are donator only and equip items that are donator only. The right pretty much just gives me the symbol in game and just makes my everything, um, oh that's by default, but it pretty much makes everything just say I'm a donator. So to make it so you can only donators can use this, you'd need to go add an if statement if and then go player dot oh don't forget your uh, brackets so player dot get rights is equal equals to 
I think you need a capital R to be honest. Um, equal equal to. Oh, actually, get rights. Wait, if player. Wait, hang on, hang on, hang on. If player dot is donator, I think is the correct one, like that or something. Um, hang on, let me just check this again. Okay, yes, that is correct. So if player is donator, and then you do a little curly bracket and another curly bracket, and then just put whatever you want the teleport to do inside those two brackets. Uh, if you want, you can indent it so it looks nice, like that or something like that. Um, and then you have pretty much got an option. But if you have an if, you should always put in an else, and then have another two curly brackets, and then just make it send a game message saying that you need to be donator to click this or something like that. Donator to use this or something like that. And so pretty much what it does or says now is if the object ID is equal to that, then it will do this. But if the player is donator, then it will add XP, uh, send the game message and teleport them. If they aren't, it will, if they're not, I should say, if they're not donator, then it will send them a game message saying you need to be donated to use this. You may need to put in some returns. I'm not actually too sure as I haven't really understood returns yet, um, but I'm pretty sure you don't need to. So hopefully that made sense. I sort of rushed this a little bit as I'm trying to just chuck out tutorials. Um, and yeah, I don't know. It just seemed very rushed and I couldn't speak that well. But hopefully it helped you. Um, Hopefully you understand it. I'll just quickly go through it again like I always do even though we're running a, a little bit over 10 minutes and anything over 10 minutes no one likes to watch. So quickly recap. Option 1 is the first click. Option 2 is the right click and then the second option down. Option 3 I think, I'm not 100% 100% sure on this is the third option down. Um, to add one in make sure you go down to where all the other else if IDs equal R and then add in your own else if ID. Make sure you have the whole if statement, what it's checking in between the uh, straight brackets and then two curly brackets and then stuff that is inside the curly brackets is what will happen when you click it. Um, always remember to check if the option is being used in game by spawning it and then clicking on it. And sometimes you'll have more than one option, which I cannot find an object that has at the moment. Like this. This is object, uh, I'm pretty sure this is option one, this is option two, and then something would be here is option three. I think, but I'm not 100% sure on that. Um, so yeah, I think one other thing you can do is if you want to do the whole item on uh, item on object, I think. Uh, hang on, I think it's item. Handle item on object is pretty much the exact same thing, but it pretty much just means if you use an item on an object, like if I use a DH helm on the sun of us, then it will do something. So it's the same layout that you should already know. Um, just the whole and let me just quickly do this. The whole if item ID is equal to that, and the object dot get ID is equal to that. So if you use this item on this object, then it will do whatever is in between the curly brackets, and that is how you do it. So it's real simple. Hopefully it's helped. Hopefully this isn't too long, and hopefully I don't know it helped you. So thanks for watching, and yeah, bye.